everyone, this is Ariel Frick, and in this video we're going to look at the works of Ken Goodman. Kenneth Goodman was born on December 23, 1927 in Chicago, Illinois. He earned his bachelor's and master's degrees from the University of California and his doctorate from California State University. Goodman started his teaching career at the middle and high school level. He then became a professor at Wayne State University in Detroit for 12 years before moving on to the University of Arizona. He retired in 1998. Goodman has served on many boards, including, but not limited to, being president of the International Reading Association, the Center for Expansion of Language and Thinking, and the Whole Language Umbrella. He has received many honors for his research, including awards for the National Council of Teachers of English the International Reading Association, the National Council on Research in Language and Literacy, and the National Reading Conference. In 1991, Goodman was elected into the Reading Hall of Fame. Kenneth Goodman is credited as the developer and researcher of whole language. Whole language has continued to be developed by Yetta Goodman, Reggie Routman, and Frank Smith. Goodman has published several books. The book that started it all, What's Whole About Whole Language, was published in 1986. He also published In Defense of Good Teaching in 1998 and The Truth About Dibbles in 2006. He has also edited several published books. Ken Goodman has written countless articles, some of which can be found on his website, and many of them are in response to other researchers' views on his work. Goodman believes in the psycholinguistic theory, that learning how to read is closely linked with learning a language and is a consequence of experiences children have with print. The psycholinguistic theory includes cueing systems such as the syntactic, semantic, and graphophonic cues. Tracy Amaro describes syntactic cues using, as using gram grammatical structure to predict words to come. Semantic cues as using meaning to predict what's to come, and graphophonic cues as visual patterns within a text. This aligns with the top-down literacy approach. Tracy Amaro suggests that Goodman's whole language borrows from the enfoldment theory, and that giving students choice and allowing students to guide their own learning is key. The two are also similar in that there is a belief that children learn and develop naturally. Goodman developed and researched whole language. Whole language is based off of the belief that children will naturally learn how to read, just like children naturally learn oral language. In this theory, meaning is considered to be paramount, and phonics-based instruction is not encouraged. Instead, Goodman believes children can figure out unknown words through their ability to construct meaning as they read. He also believes that listening, speaking, reading, and writing are all interconnected. The more one aspect of literacy is strengthened, the more they are all strengthened. Goodman is an advocate for facil facilitating authentic scenarios with high-quality text during literacy instruction. Whole language uses a term, miscue, which Goodman coined instead of reading error. Miscues are when a child reads a word incorrectly and should be opportunities for teachers to understand the child's reading process. There was a big push for the use of whole language in the 1980s and 90s, and although there is a more interactive and balanced literacy approach now, pieces of whole language can still be seen in classrooms today. Many teachers, especially in the primary grades, run literacy centers, usually during guided reading. This gives students the opportunity to have some choice and grow their skills. Naturally, some districts have moved away from basal readers in an attempt to use more authentic texts. For example, mentor texts are becoming increasingly popular for literacy instruction, allowing students to expand their knowledge of syntactic, semantic, and graphophonic cueing systems. In addition, guided reading poses many opportunities for instruction to be more meaning-based than phonics-based. Using miscue systems is often practiced in classrooms today. Please respond to the prompt on the Padlet by following the link. Thanks for following along.